yeah gas yeah the, it's the insane. problem is the the fees are too damn high um but it's it's uh it's actually a great sign right it's it, it it's what we were sort of anticipating uh, of getting getting some serious adoption and some serious traffic on ethereum and it's been so consistent mm -hmm. over the past like month or six six weeks or something like that really really ever since the yield farming happened but yeah it, it's definitely preferable to the other problem right yeah Which is, <laughs> it's it's a classic one of those uh, problems you want to have yeah yeah yeah. there's there's no yeah. competition for for space on layer one because everybody's gone somewhere else yeah, yeah. so yeah what's the gas well, price right now I find out. I don't know. 140 somewhere there. Guess. I'm gonna guess. Well, okay. Now I just saw the number. Your guess is 140. What's your guess, Vonsa? Okay. Well, is that fat? One. One. You're 60. close. The fast is 190 right now, and standard is 161. Yeah, it's pretty wow. intense. Um, I'm cheap. I can have 138, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a while to confirm your transaction, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, that's, that, that's one of the things I was going to ask you guys, like what, or maybe you've answered, right? Like what, what are you most surprised about? Uh, not, you know, just over this last, what are we, three years now? Yeah. What am I most surprised about? I'm... I, I guess part of, I knew that starting this, I knew it was gonna be hard. Um, and I think I'm not surprised at how hard, how hard it's been, but you know that saying that's like, you you kind of overestimate what you get done in a year and you underestimate what you get done in a decade. I feel like with crypto, you like smash that down to like three years and like one month. <laughs> um, so I feel like, if I have to draw a difference, actually, I'm going to turn around and say, if I have to draw the differences between kind of the 2017 hype um, versus kind of where we are today, which feels like another kind of momentum of some sort coming, um, maybe a bubble, maybe not. I think with 2017, compared to now, things just feel a lot more real for us as a company, right? Um, and I'll break that into three things. I think the first part, the pain point is real, right? So in 2017, um, I remember Crypto Kitty, like one weekend was, that was probably the weekend that everyone was like, oh, we need layer two. We need to like solve the scalability issue. And that was kind of a one big event in 2017 that, that stood out above kind of the whole, the whole hype and congestion around ICOs, right? Um, but fast forward to today, that kind of issue happens like every week, it right. seems like, or at least every month. And I think to Kasima's point earlier, it's like a sustained problem now. Um, so I, I, I knew and I really believed that congestion was going to be an issue. I think I'm surprised that it happened mm -hmm. as early as now, in a way. Um, I think the second point just drawing the difference between 2017 and 2020, at least from, from, from our perspective, right? The network's live. I think as a company in 2017, we took a white paper and, and you know, three years later, after three years of R&D and, and all of the engineering work that has been put in, um, we're in production. And for me, coming from, from more investment and, and development background, right? I didn't know really when you say software production, what that means. Um, and I think I'm learning from Kasim, I'm learning from you, Steven, I'm learning from the team that like there's a lot more to go into production, right? Like over the past three years, we've gone through all the R&Ds, four public test nets. I think we did over like 2 million transactions through those test net with no funds loss. We went through three smart contract audits, um, two main net, instances, I think since December 2019, um, we did the launch and now we have all of these disaster recovery, release playbooks, 24 hour on-call rotation, yeah, yeah, like documentation, developer portal, all that stuff. Um, I think personally for me, it's, it's, it's a good surprise and it's a good learning curve to understand what it meant to take kind of research into pseudocode into 
actual like software yeah, production. Yeah. And, and right. that's rare enough um, in any software business. I think I think it's doubly or triply yeah. hard in a in a crypto business. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, maybe just to close that question off, the third part that has been really pleasantly surprised for me, and and it sounds weird to say it, is like just how amazing our team has grown together. Um, if I were even to look back like a year year ago, it a lot of the people are the same, but we've grown so much, right? Like it just feels like a very mature, different team. Um, and I think as someone who's kind of growing with the team from num from from one staff, I feel like I set the bar here, and then every year we just keep getting higher and higher. Um, so it's been a very pleasant surprise to to kind of see it grow. And it's not, I, I think it's partly organic, but it's partly the leadership, and you know we we're, we're it's the team too, right? Because you're always hiring for someone who's who's going to make your team better. Um, and I think we, we continuously do that. And it's just been a really nice surprise. Yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of a rant. I love my team. <laughs> Rants are good. We love you, yeah. Matt. <laughs> I, think, I think one thing that's been, that's been a kind of surprising for me is that um, and and it's not like I haven't seen you know products roll out and 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 seen features go out and seen seen growth, but it's the things the things start is sort of it's like the whole crypto thing. It's happened so quickly, right? It's it's like it feels so quiet, and then suddenly it's it's the momentum really gets going, um, and, it, and it's faster than I expected. And and that's not even just about us, you know. It's like it's even the congestion, right? The gas usage, it, it like. My God! I mean, I was looking at I was looking at like our deployment costs for for our smart contracts, and it was like, I don't know, uh, four months ago it was yeah. it was one ETH, and now it's going to take us five to deploy our contracts, right? So it's like, you know, it, it it just happened kind of out of nowhere, and it was just like boom, and now here we are, and and I talked to some people on the team, and and they're like, you know, we we were sort of waiting to deploy some contracts at like thirty Gway. And now I talk to some people on the team and they're like, we're never going to see like a hundred way again. <laughs> like, like, that's like, that's it. All right. We should call our finance team. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the budget approval uh, on this yeah. call. If, if you don't listen to them, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Steven? Because you've been in the space the longest out of both of us. What's been the biggest surprise? for you um I, I guess yeah i think i think that it's both that it's taken so long uh, and that it's come so far right seems a little sort of paradoxical mm -hmm. so so i've been at this for for seven years in in different formats um which, which is long enough in in software terms right uh, but but certainly in crypto you mm -hmm. you just seen a lot of shit you know and, and it sort of seems like you're always banging your head against it. Like we did that um, AMA yesterday, right? And then after that, there was, which, which was great. Which in the world yeah, seems like a year ago. ago right? <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of, but I came right off that. So we did 90 minutes of that, right? Answered millions of questions uh, for, for the Hobie community, uh, all interested in, in the network mm -hmm. and the protocol and how it works and the problems it solves and, and all of that. Which is really cool, and and right off that call, jumped on to a conversation with with a market maker, right? Because um, we're feeling a lot of in, interest from exchanges and market makers and people that want to, you know, because of the gas, because of the congestion, they want to get onto layer two. Uh, and this guy casually sort of drops that uh, they've got some relationships, you know, the different exchanges they work with, and the kind of big token issuers they're close to, uh, and and he mentioned Silvergate which is a US-based uh, bank that has been kind of supporting a lot of crypto companies uh, over the last the last few years. It's a name I hadn't heard in, in the longest time because actually John and I, who was my co-founder at BitNet, John and I spent, I think, a week in the Silvergate offices with their chief compliance officer, with their tech team, with their revenue officers, like in 2014. And it, was, it was with a bank and they're just going, 
what the hell is a Bitcoin, right? What, what are you talking about blockchain? And we're going, well, you can do tokenization, you could do cross-border payments, you could do e-commerce, you could do money remittances, central banks might issue them, right? All, all these things, right? And they're just like, don't know what you're talking about, isn't gonna happen, right? But, but we persisted and we did the sort of education with them and we got a bank account approved by them a month or two later. I think we were the second only crypto company at the time, it was us, BitNet as they were, uh, and Coinbase that were backed by Silver Brigade. And then yesterday, here's this, you know, mm-hmm. modest sized, mid sized market maker, all about crypto trading for hundreds of different assets across multiple exchanges going, oh yeah, Silver Gate Bank us. And I'm like, wow, okay, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that be fun, right? So, and that's before you get to all the, the DeFi stuff and, and the yield. So, so it, for me, it's just that little, a little bit of that twist that it seems to have taken forever, but then as soon as it hits, it, it, it's just off like a rocket, right? Yeah. So that, that's cool. That's kind of exciting to see, see all of that play out. So you saw the beginning of that story. Yeah, 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 for, for a lot of those. And, and like, like many people in the industry at the time, like you were back when it was in the real world and you can fly and travel, right? You were, you were going to conferences, you were meeting partners, you were doing that kind of early promotion and advocacy and sales. And it, it was still a little, it was interesting, it was, it was less toxic, right, to just call it, than it seems to be now. It was less polarized. It felt much more like, let's all do this. I mean, people were competing, but they were competing for, uh, for, for business. Um, but then it's this sort of Cambrian explosion, right, of, of all these other protocols, all these other layer ones, all these other layer twos, obviously Ethereum. Uh, appeared then a little bit later, right? Um, and the whole sort of programmable money and all, all of those uh, facets have taken their own kind of cycle and their own time to, to emerge. I mean, and I, I can remember back back in those days, some people like, the genie's not going back in the bottle, right? That's Proof definitely- of work, you know, decentralized networks, that shit's not going away. I don't know, I don't know what it is, when it is, where it is, but this is the technology that drives the next 50, 100 years of all of financial services. Yeah. Yeah, someone told me when I was, when I was getting into crypto, someone, uh, someone was talking to me about this idea of um, infrastructure inversion. I don't know. I, I, I've mentioned this to you, but I don't know if I... Are you familiar with this idea of infrastructure inversion, Stephen? It's about the telecom industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so for, for those for those who aren't familiar, it's this idea that that like in telecom, um, digital infrastructure ran on analog infrastructure for a long time. Basically, the internet had to run on analog phone lines, and at some point, it flipped, and now all analog calls run on digital digital infrastructure. And so, right now, one way to look at it is like um, crypto with their with the fiat sort of peg and on and off ramps run on the sort of like traditional finance infrastructure. And at some point, you know, I, I, I really believe in this, uh, that it's going to flip. But I think that there's like, ah, someone's telling me that there's like a, a Andreas video about it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, I, I love this idea um, that it's, that it's going to flip out. And, and, and I think that that's true. It's going to be true for like ongoing, you know, and, and that's totally like mm-hmm. the genie in the bottle kind of situation. Right. Mm-hmm. 